Good morning everyone, it's Wednesday morning and this morning we're going to come together and read from John chapter 7. We're going to read verses 25 down to 52 um, as we continue our series in John for Lent. So let's read this together. Some of the people who lived in Jerusalem started to ask each other, isn't the ma this the man they're trying to kill? But here he is speaking in public and they say nothing to him. Could our leaders possibly believe that he is the Messiah? And how could it be? For we know where this man came from. When the Messiah comes, he will simply appear. No one will know where he comes from. While Jesus was teaching in the temple, he called out, Yes, you know me, and you know where I come from. But I'm not here on my own. The one who sent me is true, and you don't know him. But I know him because I come from him and he sent me to you. Then the leaders tried to arrest him, but no one laid a hand on him because his time had not yet come. Many among the crowd at the temple believed in him. After all, they said, would you expect the Messiah to do more miraculous signs than this man has done? When the Pharisees heard that the crowds were whispering such things, they and the leading priests sent temple guards to arrest Jesus. But Jesus told them, I will be with you only a little longer. Then I will return to the one who sent me. You will search for me, but not find me, and you cannot go where I am going. The Jewish leaders were puzzled by the statement. Where is he planning to go? They asked. Is he thinking of leaving the country and going to Jews in other lands? Maybe he will even teach the Greeks. What does he mean when he says, you have searched for me? You will search for me and not find me, and you cannot go where I am going. On the last day, the climax of the festival, Jesus stood and shouted to the crowds, Anyone who is thirsty may come to me. Anyone who believes in me may come and drink, for the scriptures declare, Rivers of living water will flow from my heart. When he said living water, he was speaking of the Spirit, who would be given to everyone believing in him. But the Spirit had not yet been given, because Jesus had not yet entered into his glory. When the crowds heard him say this, some of them declared, Surely this man is the prophet we've been expecting. Others said, He is the Messiah. Still others said, He can't be. Will the Messiah come from Galilee? For the scriptures clearly state that the Messiah will be born of the line, the royal line of David, in Bethlehem, the village where King David was born. So the crowd was divided about him. Some even wanted him arrested, but no one laid a hand on him. When the temple guards returned without having arrested Jesus, the leading priests and the Pharisees demanded, Why did you not why didn't you bring him here? We have never heard anyone speak like this, the guards responded. Have you been led astray too? the Pharisees mocked? Is there a single one of us rulers or Pharisees who believes in him? This foolish crowd follows him, but they are ignorant of God's law. God curses on them. Then Nicodemus, the leader who had met with Jesus earlier, spoke up. Is it legal to convict a man before he is given a hearing, he asked. They replied, are you from Galilee too? Search the scriptures and see for yourself. No prophet ever comes from Galilee. Amen. And that brings us to very nearly the end of John chapter 7. It's a, again another interesting passage, it, uh, again one that shows human nature. Um, as people judge Jesus on what they think and what they assume, they assume he's from Galilee. They even say, you know, but the Messiah's going to come from the line of David from Bethlehem. You know, they, they don't even realise that Jesus was born in Bethlehem. Um, but they, they judge him by the, their impression, by their outwards appearance not by what actually Jesus does, not by his actions, by his witness. Um, and isn't that so true of what we do at times as well? We look at somebody and we make a snap judgment call. Maybe we don't like the way they look, maybe we don't like where they come from um, and because of that we dismiss people or we put them down rather than actually listening to them or watching their actions and seeing what they do. And seeing what their heart is. Jesus displayed his heart to the people. His actions spoke for him. 
but the people couldn't see past where he was from or the fact that he was the, the son of a carpenter. Um, they, they just, some of them just couldn't get beyond that, which is sad because God doesn't judge us by what he sees on the outside, but looks into our hearts. Our hearts are who we are. Our hearts are what we do. Our hearts are a true reflection of who we follow and who we love. Does your heart love Jesus? Does your heart follow Jesus? Well, then your actions should speak the God. Is your heart cold? Well, then your actions will be cold. People watch and people judge. Um, let us judge in the right way. Let us make assumptions in the right way. Let us not judge at all, but let us accept people is what we should do. But I know that as people, we will judge. I know that we are very quick to point the finger. But before we point that finger, let's point it back at ourselves first of all. And let's think about what our actions say, about what our actions speak to, about and let's think about what people think about us as they would look upon us. And if, and if that measure is going to be used against others, then let's use it against ourselves first of all. Let's turn it on its table, turn the table on its head, so to speak, and think about where it points to in our relationship with God before we even start to think about talking of somebody else. If the people had done that, and thought about themselves, about their own actions, rather than simply pointing a finger at Jesus. It would have been a very different world, wouldn't it? Um, but then Jesus, God predicted, God told us what was going to happen. God told us that the people would not accept his son, that the people would reject him, uh, that the people would crucify him. But it all had to happen so that we could have our sins forgiven. We are seeing in John's Gospel, the Old Testament being played out, the prophecies coming true, um, and we are seeing just how God's word is so accurate and so true to us. But today, as we think about what we do, may we be challenged by the fact that people will watch us and that people will judge us by what they see. So may that encourage us, challenge us, spur us on, to live our lives for God. Let's pray. Lord, thank you again for your word this morning. Thank you for what it says, what it teaches us, what it shows us, for the challenges that it brings, for the encouragement that it brings. Lord, help us always to be open to your word, open to what you say to us through your word, open to how your word challenges us to change behaviour. Lord, today, just help us to follow you. Help us to let our actions speak of the love that you have for the world around us so that people may see not us but you the people would forget that they see actions from us but rather that they would see your love in all that happens father thank you and go with us now we pray in christ's name amen thanks folks for joining in this morning remember i'm back again tonight at half seven for our bible study so you're very welcome to join us for then um, and then uh, back again tomorrow morning at half nine for our next Bible reading. Take care and God bless.